Parshas Yisro. We're looking at uh, three verses that seem to be uh, some kind of random scattershot um, about the relationship between the Almighty when he took us out of Egypt and as it um, projects going forward. So let's look at uh, Perik Yudtes, Psukim, Dalid, Hey, and Vav. That's 19, uh, 4 through 6. They read as follows. Um, the intro is that you should say this. Kosomar Levesi Yaakovis Agi Tell the Jews this. That's in Pasuk uh, Gimel. Okay. Atemri Sem Asher Sisi Limitzarim. You have seen what I have done to Egypt. Vo Esa Eschem Al Kanfeni Shorim Vavi Eschem Elai. And I have carried you on the wings of eagles and brought you to me. What is the wings of, eagle, of eagles? And of what significance is it? Is this an analogy to Hashem himself, or is this a vehicle by which Hashem accomplishes something? Let's book that and bookmark that and uh, proceed. Next verse, this is Hey, number five. Va'ata, and now, that's Atah with an ayin, is now, Atah with an aleph means you. Va'ata, and now, im shamoa tishma'u b'koli. If you listen closely to my voice, ushmartem esprisi, and you observe my covenant. Vihisemli Sigula Mikolamim, and you will be the most treasured of all the nations. Kili Kolar, it's because the land is to me. Um, is there a connection between listening carefully and observing and being a treasure? We'll talk about that too. And then finally, Pasuk uh, Vav, which is uh, verse 6. You will be for me a nation of priests a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the things or the words that you should speak to the children of Israel. There seems to be a bunch of disparate notions here. Um, do they do they paint a cohesive picture? So let's let's go back now. Um, first of all, this is something uh, we see by the bookends. It's uh, per, uh, uh, Gimel, it says, Kosomar, this is what you should say. And then in, in at the end of Pasuk Vav, it says, um, these are the things that just so this is a declaration now what's the nature of this declaration so the the first thing is you have seen how I've taken you out of Egypt and carried you on eagle's wings now Rashi says eagle's wings what what's what is special about an eagle so most birds when they carry their young they carry them in their talons because they're afraid of uh, being attacked from above an eagle doesn't worry about being attacked from above it's the highest it's the mightiest it's the fastest um, uh, it could be a falcon is, is faster. It could be, a, I don't know if an Escher is a falcon. We translate it as an eagle. Um, an eagle is swift. Minisharim kalu. So, but Rashi focuses on this notion of carrying uh, its young on its, on its wings. Um, in the research that I've done, it appears that when eagles are teaching their young to fly, they kind of push them out of the nest and sometimes they flounder and they um, fall. And then the eagle swoops down below and uh, cushions the fall of the baby eagles so that they land on the wings of the, I assume, mother uh, eagle. So the, the eagle's wings protect the uh, young uh, ones from what might be a damaging fall. Okay, that's Rashi. But as I mentioned, uh, we also have this tradition of um, swiftness. Have a Kal Kanesher. Uh, Chazal say, be uh, swift like an eagle to do God's will. And minas sharim kalu, they were, they were swifter, lighter, light of foot, if you will. Um, uh, eagles can fly anywhere between, depending on whether they're uh, diving for prey, uh, ordinarily 100, 150 miles an hour in ordinary flight. And if they're diving for prey, they can go as fast as 250 miles an hour. That's very quick. And there are those in who say that uh, means I have lifted you up. How have I lifted you up? I've lifted you up through the redemption and and I brought you to me, meaning I've delivered you to Harsinai, meaning I've delivered you to receiving the Torah. This has an implication of a swift turn of events from being uh, slaves in Egypt to being uh, a holy people worthy of and actually receiving the Torah. And then we go on. 
now this is of a piece with the next verse. The next verse is, Vatayim Shema Atish Mubakali. If you listen to me and you observe my Torah, then you will be a treasured nation to me. Of all of the nations, Kili Kala Aretz, and Rashi points out that it's not that the other nations aren't, uh, aren't valued, but that the nation that follows the word of God is valued more. And here we have a continuation of lifting up the, the people from slavery, bringing them to a, um, a, a, a source of living waters. That's not the analogy in the verse, but it's of, of, of the Torah, which is referred to as Mayim Chaim in, in other places. Um, uh, it, this is now the vehicle for getting close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I will bring you close to me, and, and you will be my treasured. And then the uh, final knockout punch, if you will, is Vatem Tiyuli Mamleches Kohanim Mugoy Kadosh, and you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. This is what you should tell the Jewish people. What does that mean, you'll be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation? So Rabbeinu Avram ben Rambam says, and this is echoed in the words of Rav Kook, that there are there are those who say that it means that you will teach you will you you will teach you will lead the way you'll teach morality. Uh, the Rambam was was very big in in uh, in maintaining that the Jewish people have had a, um, a, a, a the effect of improving the moral posture of the entire world by influencing a significant portion of it, specifically Christianity and Islam, uh, uh, to be monotheistic, or those who follow Christianity and Islam, to be um, monotheistic. And that's a teaching of the Jews. Uh, Rabbeinu Avram ben Arambam and Rav Kook uh, take this a little uh, deeper, and they say that it, it's not necessarily related to any specific mitzvah or command, but rather when the, the, the goal of being, the job of being a goy kadosh, uh, a holy nation, which we've explored earlier, in, uh, previously, the definition of Kadosh, and we've suggested that it means dedicated. We're dedicated to a mission. So he says, and with this, the with exception, if we observe the Torah, then with our exceptional conduct and behavior, both to other people, to other Jews, to other to, to non-Jews, to to ourselves, to to the Almighty, then and the the, the way we live will be Kesefer Chai, will be like a living book. Dugma l'umot ha'olam. It will be a um, an example of how to live for the nations of the world, and this is Kvot Shemayim. This is the the honor of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. and the the notion of Goy Kadosh of a sanctified or designated, dedicated people is if we keep the Torah, and then Memela inevitably we show how to live a life of uh, morality, a life of purity, and a life of productivity. Um, Rav Kook adds that the place to do this is in Eretz Yisrael, in the land of Israel, where the entire nation uh, can be completely dedicated on its land, fulfilling the mitzvot there. I'd like to suggest that, despite the fact that there's partisan criticism from all parts of the world, but the way the Israeli army is conducting the war, the way that it protects uh, its own citizens, the way that it regards with great respect the uh, remains of those who Rahman have been have been killed, and the way the extraordinary efforts, the extraordinary steps that the Israel Defense Forces takes to protect the lives of non-combatant citizens stands in a way, in a, in a very stark way, in contrast to other wars that are going on right now, uh, in which civilian life does not seem to be um, a value. As a matter of fact, civilians are seem to be the targets of the, of the warring forces. And in this one aspect, which is the conduct of war, we can take great um, pride in the manner in which the Israel Defense Forces is conducting itself. And uh, this is but one example. Uh, there are countless examples of chasadim, of selfless, selfless acts of kindness that Jews are doing for each other uh, around the world as a result of the disruption that is caused by the hostilities in Gaza. We are to be 
the words of the Mephorshimers, to be ministers, supposed to be moral leaders to the rest of the world. And it, we're currently in a situation not of our choosing, but when we do choose, we are called upon to choose in accordance with the Torah, with its precepts, and with its morals, and to be an example for the entire world. Have a good job.